What's up guys, it's Akitix here bringing you guys a tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of pen tooling. So, I'm going to bring up a logo concept that I have made and uh, let's say that in this case I want to have my 2D logo uh, and be able to edit it and play with it in uh, Cinema 4D. So first step is obviously opening up your logo. You don't need to make any new layers or anything like that. You don't touch anything here. You go straight to your pen tool right here. Okay. Oops. You're going to click. It's better if you find, uh, well, actually, no. You're going to go here to your paths, and you're going to have, depending on how many parts your logo has, separate parts, uh, you're gonna have different amount of paths, but I'll show you later how to uh, how to uh, solve that problem. Well, which isn't really a problem, but you're just gonna have to merge them in later. So, to begin with, you're gonna want to find let's see any corner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click here, and uh, since this is slightly rounded, I'm just gonna click on the bottom, and then click and pull up a bit, just so it's slightly rounded. And as you can see, now that I've done this, I wish I could just continue. However, it does this uh, this weird loop here. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hold Alt on your keyboard and then click on the middle point, middle point of your, uh, your anchor point. That's what it's called. You're going to go ahead and click that. So one of, your, one of the two, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, one of the two poles or sticks is going to go away. And then you're going to hold Shift. Whenever there's a straight line that you want to use or uh, use pen tool with, you want to hold shift because no matter where I click, or actually, wait, that was a bad example. So, for example, here, the it doesn't matter how far away or off I am. If I hold shift, uh, it'll just uh, keep it straight. So, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to hold shift so that it's straight. And then on these longer curves, I'd recommend not doing the entire thing just because it'll look a bit sloppy. So just go about halfway down. Click and hold, click and drag, excuse me. Hold alt, click. And do the same thing until the very bottom. Like so. Hold Alt. You have to remember to uh, to do that step. It's very crucial uh, when uh, pen tooling, because also a trick to to making making them more accurate. You want to mess around with how far you pull this. So many times when it's a very small, very small uh, curve or incline like this, you're just gonna want to click on the on the top and then pull up. And then very very slowly pull to the right or to the left, just because it'll uh, it'll stick closer. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click without holding any buttons. Here, there's a slight curve, so I'm just gonna adjust it. And so you get the gist of things. Essentially, you're just gonna outline your entire logo. And actually, if I were to very quickly just to show you, just for the Let's see. So as you can see, this is not as accurate, but well. So uh, if you had, if you didn't see that, when you were when you're ready to uh, finish up your first path, when you go back to the original anchor point, you're going to see this little dot next to your next to your pen tool. You're just going to go ahead and click that, and that uh, finishes your first work path. So as you can see, uh, however, whenever you have letters, for example, or spaces that you don't want to be part of your logo you're gonna have to pen to those as well and it's gonna it's gonna leave them in the same work path it's not gonna show up uh, like all the anchor points for the previous time you went around your logo but that doesn't matter so if you look at the updated work path here it's cut out that part as well so I'm just gonna very quickly do this like so, because then I'm going to show you how to export this into Cinema 4D and then what you can do from there. So, I'm 
that. And then I'm just going to go... Oh, well. It will not be accurate at all. And I need to zoom out. So as you can see, that, that's the reason behind uh, whatever doing it halfway through. It just makes it much more accurate later. And making it accurate now is definitely going to help you out in Cinema 4D. That way you won't have to mess with any flaws, uh, etc. So, whoops. You're going to have to click and drag here. There we go. So, okay, essentially let's say this is the logo we want and I'm just going to ignore this part right here. So you can go back to your layers, everything ready, and then you're going to go to File, Export, Paths to Illustrator, and you're going to select, uh, if you have more than one path, it's going to give you the option to select all paths, but right now I only have one, which is my work path, so I'm going to hit OK. You're going to go ahead and save it, so I'm going to just do that. Open up Cinema 4D. Just like that. Wait for this to open. And uh, very plainly, you're just going to hit open. And then double click your AI. Don't change anything unless you want to change the scale, but I, I've never done so, so I'd recommend not doing either. And there you have it. There's your logo in AIs. And you're just gonna sit in there just like you would for a normal normal logo. Or actually this is a trick, so you're gonna go ahead and select the first path, hold down alt, then go to extrude nerves. Do the same for the for the second one. And there you have it. Now your 2D logo has been successfully transferred from 2D to 3D. And now here there's an infinite amount of uh, modifications you can make to your logo because Cinema 4D is really incredible like that. So yeah, there you go. There you have it guys. So hopefully you learned from this and if you did make sure to drop a like because uh, that's my motivation when making these videos. So essentially that's it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and it helped and uh, if it did make sure to drop it. Actually, alright, just, just a bonus, bonus thing just because I feel like that was too quick. I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys the final, very uh, important part to, uh, let's just get a render. I'll get my rum render like this. And uh, similar to, well, actually, exactly what I did in my, in my speed art was I made a new layer. You're going to select your pen tool. And I'm just going to do it on a couple of letters just because... This is a slightly demanding text. You're going to do the same thing. Outline your your letters. Like so. Just get it all the way around. Like that. Like that. And all right, so now that you've essentially, assuming you've outlined every single one of your letters, you're going to go to your brush. You're going to make the, keep it on a soft brush. However, make the size extremely small, down to six, six pixels. Uh, if you want, depending on how big your render is, you might want to go down to even four pixels. It depends on how clean you want it to be. I'm just going to keep it on six because this is a rather big render. And you're going to want to make it, this depends on your color correction. So, for example, if I were to bring mine in right now, bring in my color correction pack, which is for sale as usual. So, if you ever become interested, you can just message me. And we're just going to bring in our render, like so, just to test out a couple color corrections. So, let's say, all right, let's say I want this one. Take off this pattern. Perfect. I'm going to bring that back in like that. Put a black backing. 
All right, so now that we have our outline, I'm going to go back to your new layer, which you haven't touched yet. Click on Pen Tool, right click, Stroke Path. You're going to, you're going to, since you modified your brush, you're going to leave it on Brush. Simulate Pressure selected, hit OK. Then hit the, the Delete key on your keyboard. And there you have it. Now you have an outline of your uh, of your of your letters. So this can be used whenever you want to. Uh, for example, you're gonna want to let's see, distort. Go to ripple, and this leaves a pretty nice effect. I really, actually, to be honest, this is one of my favorite things I like to do, and that's slightly too much. Distort ripple. I'm gonna bring it down to. Let's say 130, 140. And so this just like gives a abstract outline to your text. And uh, another thing I do is if I go back to when I had my outline, of course, let's see. There we go. You're going to want to make the color of your brush, let's say blue in this case, because that's the color of my letters. I'm going to do the same thing. Stroke path. Okay. Ooh, I did it on the wrong layer. There we go. Make sure you have the the empty layer selected. I, uh, that was my mistake right now. Hit backspace and there you have it. That looks way better than the white one. So that just gives a nicer, cleaner look to your letters. That way people notice it and see it better. And actually while I'm here I'm just going to show you guys a final trick. It's not related to this. It's, uh, but it's something I did on my to, on my speed art, which a lot of people ask me about. What I like to do is after selecting a color correction, which I I choose based on uh, how much it darkens the letters and how well it's going to fit on my background. I don't always like the the color that's given to me. So in, in this case, it would be blue. So therefore, you click on the on your color correction pack. You go to gradient map. Therefore, it is above the pack. Make sure make sure it's always above it. You're gonna go to hue. Then here you 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 typically have uh some default ones and uh so if I were to bring in these a lot of these I've made a lot of them I've gotten from packs around uh since I've started so so for example this one or actually I'm just gonna go with the original this one it just looks nicer when it has this outline to the text, as you can see, compared to the rest. And then if you add this this ripple, if it did, oh that was the wrong layer, if I add the ripple here, that just looks overall uh, just gives it a nice nice touch. So that's pretty much it on the basics of uh, pen tooling. I know there's much more, but this is uh, how I've taught myself to use it and how I find it useful when making graphics. So hopefully this helped you out, and if it did, make sure to drop a like, and uh, definitely comment letting me know what you guys want the next tutorial to be, because I'm running low on ideas. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and peace out.